Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and Jetnado Video Podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about the rotation of jet engines. Do they rotate the same direction, opposite directions, clockwise, counterclockwise, and what is a critical engine? Stay tuned. Wind 310 at this video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, Brilliant.org will make you smarter in the areas that are really, really important for your flight training or whatever occupation that you're getting yourself into. So if you want to get better at maths and physics and you want to do so in a fun and intuitive way, well then, the 500 first of you who uses this link here below will get 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant and that will unlock all of their daily problems, weekly problems, all of their courses and everything inside of both the app and the website. So check it out. Right guys, so today we're going to talk about jet engine rotations and uh, in order to understand why the jet engines work the way they do and also propeller engines work the way that they do, you do need to understand quite a lot of physics and maths. That's just the nature of things because we are going to be talking about things like torque, for example, which is important on specifically single engine propeller aircraft. We're going to be talking about the theory of gyroscopic effects and uh, momentum arms. All of that has a clear kind of connection to physics. The first thing we're going to be talking about is what we call a critical engine. Right. Uh, when we're talking about critical engines, we're talking about propeller aircraft. And the reason that propeller aircraft has a critical engine is something called a P effect. Now, I'm not going to go into that. You can go to uh, Wikipedia or whatever and just type that in and see exactly what it is. But in short strokes, it means that the uh, propellers are producing different amount of forward thrust depending on if the propeller is going up or down. Okay, A propeller that's going down actually produces a little bit more backward thrust than a propeller going up and it has to do with the angle of attack and the forward motion of the aircraft. But if it does that, if the propellers are producing different amount of thrust depending on where the propeller blade is, well, that would mean that the thrust that the engine is creating is not located exactly in the center, like in the spinner of the aircraft. It's actually located a little bit out. So on a propeller-driven aircraft, uh, if the propellers are rotating in the same direction, so they're not rotating opposite to each other, they're rotating the same direction, it means that one of the engines is going to have a slightly smaller momentum arm. That means that the thrust that is being produced is, is slightly closer to the body of the aircraft on one side than the other. With me so far? Good. Now, the critical engine is the engine that, if it fails, produces the biggest jaw to the aircraft, as in produces the most problems for the pilot to control it if they're on the runway. So the critical engine is going to be the engine that has the smaller momentum arm, because if that one fails, it means that the engine that has the bigger momentum arm, as in where the thrust of the engine is further away from the center of the aircraft, that one is still going to be producing thrust, and that is going to have a much bigger kind of jawing effect on the, run, on, the, uh, on the aircraft. So what this means is, depending on how bad this effect is, the aircraft is going to have a higher or a lower VMCG, as in controllability speed on the runway. All right. This is important because the VMCG, um, that's the speed when the uh, rudder, has enough aerodynamic effect to counteract any jaw, depending on which engine is failing. Okay, This is something we do spend quite a lot of time talking about during the ATPL theory. So if you have engines with propellers rotating in the same direction, well then you will have a critical engine. If you have counter-rotating propellers, well then you won't have a critical engine because then the manufacturers can choose to make the momentum arms smaller on both sides and that means that the effect of the yaw 
is going to be smaller. All right? Cool. Now, on jet engines, we don't have critical engines, right? That's because the fan blades, the multiple fan blades inside of a jet engine and the way that it, the uh, uh, air that is being jousted outside of the jet engine is being kind of stopped from rotating by the st uh, stator blades inside of the engine. Because of that, you don't really have a difference of where the thrust is being produced. It's being produced in the center of the jet engine, okay? So there's no difference between the jet engine's hands. There is no critical engine. Uh, but the next thing that we need to talk about is, like I said, um, the effect of torque. Now, torque is something that mainly affects um, helicopters. And the torque effect, to keep it simple, has to do with Newton's third law of motion, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So that means that a propeller of a um, helicopter, for example, when that's rotating, it's trying to rotate the, the helicopter as well. So if it's rotating one direction, the helicopter will be affected to rotate in the opposite direction. And that's being counteracted with that small propeller in the back of the helicopter. You have a similar effect on single engine propeller aircraft as well because it only has one propeller in the front and when that's rotating it's also actually trying to rotate the, the aircraft behind it. Um, that doesn't really affect the norm, the Cessnas and so on out there but when you started to have really large aircraft that did have an effect so they started to produce counter rotating um, engines to the propeller and things like that. Uh, on jet engines, once again, that is not a factor. Uh, there is no torque effect coming out of a jet engine for the simple reason that the, um, uh, the air that is being produced, it, it's not rotating. It's actually not, it's, it's being propulsed straight back without any rotation to it. Um, because the less the air is rotating, the more efficient the thrust uh, vector is for the jet engine. Okay, cool. Now, the third thing that we need to, to talk about are gyroscopic effects. Now, you might have seen videos about the gyroscope effect. If you put a gyro inside of a suitcase, for example, and someone walking down the street, when they try to move a corner, the suitcase just want to go straight forward. Now, um, once again, you have to pay attention on your physics class when they're talking about gyroscopic effects. Um, but simply spoken, it has to do with the fact that once you start having a mass rotating, Okay, when it's rotating, the quicker it's rotating, the higher the gyroscopic effect is and the more force you need to apply to it in order for it to change direction, angular direction. And if you think about it, the jet engines on larger aircraft is exactly that. You have a huge fan in the front who's rotating at a fairly high speed, which would indicate that it would be quite significant gyroscopic effect on that one. And the same goes for the rest of the, uh, of the jet engine as well, which is all rotating parts. So there is gyroscopic effects on, um, on jet aircraft. But the fact is that the rotating part, as in the, the fan, which is the heaviest rotating part on the jet engine, is so relatively small to the overall weight of the aircraft that the gyroscopic effect is almost negligible. That together with the fact that the aircraft is moving fairly quickly through the air and you have both the wings and the uh, stabilizer and the fin counteracting any um, effects that the, you know, any gyroscopic effects there might be, means that from a handling perspective, there's almost nothing. All right. We don't feel it, we don't notice it as we're handling the aircraft. But the gyroscopic effect is there, it is measurable. Okay. Now, there are aircraft who are very affected by gyroscopic effects. And those aircraft tends to be the jet aircraft that needs to hover. So if you look at, for example, the Harrier jump jet, that one does need to take the gyroscopic effect into, um, into account. And that's because it's standing completely still and it only has one jet engine, all right? It might have two actually, but uh, uh, anyway, when they, um, <laughs> when they created the uh, Harrier jump jet, they realized this quite quickly because obviously if you were standing still then and you wanted to kind of move forward, well then the, the uh, Harrier would be, be um, rolling. So what they did was they created a jet engine where the high speed spool and the low speed spool inside of the engine were, were rotating in different directions 
by doing that, they effectively eliminated the, um, uh, the gyroscopic effect and they could control it. If they wouldn't have done that, it would have been almost impossible to hover it. Okay? So, that brings us to the conclusion of this video, as in, do jet engines operate, rotate the same direction or opposite direction? What do you think? Yes, they operate in the same direction. And there is a very good reason for that. And as always, when we're dealing with airlines, what is the reason for that? Economy. Of course, money. Because there's no real difference in handling um, effects, as I've just talked about. Okay? It doesn't really matter if they were operating, uh, rotating the opposite or the same. But there's a huge deal when it comes to spares and um, engine costs. If you would need to have counter-rotating jet engines, it would effectively mean that you need to have two sets of spares, two different types of engines for the entire fleet. Okay? If you have engines rotating the same way, they are essentially the same engines, and if you need to replace them, you can just put a right engine on the left side or left engine on the right side, it doesn't really matter. And the components and all the fittings and everything are exactly identical. Now, the jet engines are the most expensive part of the aircraft, so the less spares you need to keep for them, the less money you need to pay for it, the cheaper it is for the airlines, and the second most important thing after safety for an airline is always going to be economy. And that's why you will see the jet engines rotate the same way both sides of any given airliner. Now, whether it's operating counterclockwise, like it is on the Boeing 737, for example, or clockwise, like it does on the uh, Trent 1000 engines on the uh, Boeing 787, that doesn't matter, all right? It has no effect at all which way they're rotating, but the fact that they're rotating the same way on both sides of the aircraft, that is important. Right, guys, so as you can see, understanding the basic and quite advanced concepts of physics, like, you know, gyroscopic effects, momentum arm, things like that is something that you really need to do, all right? You're going to encounter it during your ATPL theory, and in most cases, if you're going for an engineering degree or anything like that, you will also come across it. Now, this is why I am so happy and so proud to have Brilliant.org as the sponsors of this episode. Brilliant.org is a website that will give you all of the tools you need in order to understand these concepts, and they will do so in a really intuitive and fun way. They will use graphics, they will use animations, and they will use you know, schematics in order to show you how to deal with a specific problem. And one thing that they do, which I really like, is that every day they send out a little nut to crack, a little daily problem. Uh, so if you're sitting on the commute or you're you know, having a little bit of time over, instead of checking your Facebook status, you can actually become a little bit smarter by going in trying to solve those problems. Now, one of the problems that I really liked is the problem they have on today, which is about how the Greeks could disprove the flat earth theories out there. So, if you want, you can just click this link here below. Now, the 501st of you who does that will get 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant, and that will unlock all of the daily problems, the weekly problems, and all of the courses that are inside there. So, I highly recommend you to check it out. It is a great tool. I highly recommend it. And um, yeah, let me know what you think about it. Now, guys, before I let you go, right? Check out the Mentor Aviation app. Just today, we have released the first out of three upgrades to the app, which will make it much better looking, much easier to use. And it's one step on my quest to make um, Mentor Aviation into the social platform for anyone who's interested in aviation. You will find people like me, professional pilots who are there to help you to explain things. You will find flight students who are in flight schools and maybe they want to share about what they think about their flight school or what to think about. Or just aviation enthusiasts or passengers who are looking at things at airports or in aircraft and they want to know, you know, what is that? They can just go in, talk to me in the chat, just tag at mentor or any of the Airbus pilots, the Falcon pilots, all of the different pilots that are in there and they are there to help in a positive and a constructive way. So, 
Get the app right now, it's completely free. You have links to it here in the video as well. And if you want, you can also get a collection, like a 360 collection where you can well, swipe around. You can either swipe with your fingers, seeing what's going on inside of the cockpit, or you can move the phone. Or if you have a Google Cardboard headset, you can actually put it on and it will feel like you're sitting inside of the cockpit together with me when I'm doing things like wind shear escape maneuvers or um, a rejected takeoff and evacuation or TCAS maneuvers. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.